Okay, so as we circle back to pick up the last couple tools that were added after we created the tools video, we are going to finish up now with the Affinity Designer Designer Persona tools by talking about the Contour tool. And this is the most recently added tool, and it is one of the most interesting tools. I'll be super interested to hear in the comments if you all have ways that you make use of this because the tool is very interesting and intriguing, but I rarely really feel the need to use it, and it could just be the way my workflow is. So I'm super interested if you drop in the comments, let me know if there's a way you're using the contour tool or after you watch the video, if there's a way you see yourself using the contour tool. So you're just going to go four tools down on the left hand side and that is the contour tool. It looks kind of like a target with arrows coming out of it. And what it does is it allows you to offset the fill of an object from its path. And it doesn't actually impact the size of the stroke, although it does impact the position of a stroke, which we'll look at in a second when we get to the line here. So let's start by using this on some text where I think it actually can be quite useful. I did use this in my video where we talked about creating a retro style text. So if we come in here and we select the word contour, you can see you can select the object while you're on the contour tool and you do get a small options bar down in the bottom of the screen that you can select. So the first thing that you can do is you can drag on the selected object and this is live text so it works on both shapes and live text. Pretty much anything that you have in Affinity Designer you can use the contour tool on. And when you click and drag you can either drag like inwards which will actually contour it out or you can drag outwards, which will contour it in. But you can see the path of the object does not actually change. If you look down your toolbar, you'll see that this is affecting what's called the radius. So if we go ahead and tap on the radius, we can set it back to zero and then it will be set back to what it was before. We can also drag on that radius circle to set this up by points. So you can see that when it gets bigger, we're getting positive increments in the radius and when it gets smaller to the point where it actually disappears, we're getting negative increments. So let's just go ahead and reset that back to zero. So when might you use this? Well, if you wanted to kind of have a fun set of text, maybe kind of like 80s stylish, like multiple colors going on, you might just duplicate your text and use the contour tool to actually make that text larger, which is better than resizing it because it will actually keep it on the same path. Let me just show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this by hitting Command C, Command V, and now I have another one. And so I'm going to take my back one in my layers panel, change its fill to green, and then I'm on my contour tool right now. So I can just go ahead and increase my radius. And you can see the green comes out and appears there. So we've been able to do something similar before when we use the appearance panel to add multiple strokes to it. So this is kind of a different way of doing that. So let's say we wanted to go even further with this. We could duplicate our yellow one again, move it to the back, make it purple, and then bring up our radius even further on that one. It can be a little bit sensitive sometimes. And sometimes you'll get weird things like you can see right here on this end, we just have kind of a weird aberration there for what's happening. And it can be a little bit odd sometimes. And I'm not sure what causes that. If anyone knows, go ahead, drop in the comments, let us know. So let's take a look at what some of the other options do. So let's choose our contour tool again, select our red square here. And this will allow us to see a few more things. So if we go ahead and make this bigger, you can see that we have kind of this rounded corner type here. But we can also choose to have a miter corner type or a bevel corner type. And of course, this is the same options that we have inside of the stroke panel. When we come over here and we go into advanced, we have those options here as well. But here we can actually do this just with a fill, which is interesting. So let's go ahead, we'll change that back to round and just show you that this doesn't make much difference when you drag it inward. Basically at that point, everything is just a regular join. We do have the option to change the miter size, which if we change to miter, we can then adjust down and get a bevel with a miter joint. I'm really not sure why that matters, but it's something that you can do. Okay, we can't see contour cap here because this is not a line, but I'll show you that when we get to the line. And then there's this option for contour fill, and we can choose to force the contour fill open, which kind of turns the fill into a stroke almost rather an interesting thing that you can do there and you can adjust it like so. 
depending on what you choose to do. And of course, with all of this, we have this last option, which is bake appearance. When we bake the appearance, it's no longer going to follow this path. It's going to create new paths based on the appearance that we have set. So let's go ahead and bake it. And you can see that we now have an object that instead of being one path is two paths because there's actually an inside deal there. So if we switch to our Navigator Studio and we change our main view to outline, we can actually see what's going on here. You can see how our lines work out. We'll switch back to this in a second when we get to the line to see what's happening there. But for now, we'll switch back to vector. I want to show you something with these circles, which is a little bit interesting. If we select these two circles, and then we go ahead and we turn them into a compound shape, which we can do by going up to our three dot menu and holding down on add. Make sure that you hold down on it until it creates the compound shape. We can see the compound shape in our layers panel. So we have two shapes that are making up this one compound. Why that's important is because it will create an interesting dynamic when we start to change the contour. For this, we want to select our compound shape with our contour tool and then drag it so that it goes in. Then we want to take our move tool and select one of the circles. Then as we get closer, you'll see that these two shapes start to merge together because they are a compound shape. So this can create a very kind of interesting dynamic between the shapes as they start to join. But of course, if we go back to our Navigator Studio, change this back to our outline, you can see what's going on here. And if we then choose to move this shape again, you can watch how the outlines are interacting. So this is pretty interesting. And I don't know if this was something that they intended or if this is just kind of an unintended consequence of how they built the contour tool. But it certainly creates an interesting dynamic between shapes when they are together in a compound shape. Okay, the last thing that we want to look at here is a single line. So if we select the line, and this is just a two point line with the contour, we can then go ahead and we can expand it out just like any other shape. And you can see we start to get a rectangle even though there's only actually a line there. So there's two things that I want to show you here. The first one is that you can choose the contour cap. So when we do that, you can see we can switch this to round or square just like we could do with the line itself or none, which is just the regular. Let's set that to round. And then let me show you what happens if we add a fill to this line. Normally, of course, you can't see anything when there's a line with a fill. But now that this line is acting like a shape, we can go ahead and we can fill it. So let's go ahead and select yellow here. And you can see that it is now filled. But if we go back here to our navigator and we switch this to outline again, you can see we still only have a single line here. So this contour tool has a lot of similarities between like doing some things with the appearance panel in Adobe Illustrator and also being able to offset a path in Adobe Illustrator. So it's similar to both of those things, although it does not exactly duplicate that functionality. But it does make things interesting because I can obviously come in here with my node tool and I can just select one of these nodes and I can direct this whole kind of path around. Now, of course, if I went back to the contour tool and I chose to bake the appearance, that would bake that all in. Okay, that is the basics of the contour tool, how it's able to affect different types of shapes and things. Let me just point out real quick before we end here that the stroke size did not change when we changed it with the contour tool. It's really only adjusting the fill of an object. So the stroke doesn't get bigger. We can still make the stroke bigger by swiping up on our stroke studio, but it doesn't get bigger itself. Okay, so that's going to wrap up all of the tools for us. So soon we will be moving on to talking about Affinity Photo and the tools that are found in that program. Go ahead, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think of the contour tool and what you think you will be using it for. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.